episode 10 on rapid turn. Um, actually, this is a late night clip that I've just put together to put in front of the video that you're about to watch because I just wanted to update you. I was just uploading uh, the main video to YouTube and I noticed online on the CNC zone that Tormac have just uh, put an update in there. Um, so if you want to have a look at that thread, you'll get some more information about the current situation. Um, they're going to be notifying um, the customers involved in this uh, problem um, fairly soon with more details. Um, so that makes uh, a couple of comments that I make later in the video um, no longer relevant or entirely relevant. You'll see when, when you get to that point. So this is just a little clip I've put in before the main video, right? So now we'll go on with that. Um, so on this episode, I'm going to go into uh, uh, measuring the accuracy of the diameter, the potential accuracy of the diameter of machining parts in rapid turn. Uh, I'm going to go into a spindle stop um, and uh, running a part on auto, auto gang tool changes. Um, going through and producing a bit of code um, and just, just going over again how I've done that. Um, so this is the first paying production job, which is really cool. It's starting to earn its keep now. Um, I can't go into the details of the job. Uh, it's just a roughing stage, this, and I've got to make scores and scores of these parts. So I'd hate to be making them manually. Um, so it's really good to have Rapid Turn up and running. Um, out of respect for client confidentiality, I can't really go into the uh, explaining what the part is. I probably can't even show you it through to completion. I don't really want to identify it, so sorry about that. But this early roughing stage, um, I can show you. So I'll get on with it now. Enough raving on. Cheers. Well, one question I've had with the rapid turn is how accurate can it be? And I'm sure a lot of you folk are thinking the same thing, you know. The head has to come up and down and repeat and position accurately in order to create an accurate diameter. So is that a limiting factor? I mean it's it's um, quite a big heavy slideway going up and down with a ball screw right back there in the main column. Um, the tools hanging out right here at the front. I mean it, it, you know if it's going to come up and down in a slightly different position each time you're going to get diameters all over the place and it will be very limited in its usefulness so I've been a little bit worried about that so um, I've just done a little test um, which I'm going to uh, put the clip in now and, and showing that it's showing that it's really good so that's a big relief of course um, it's dependent on you having your gib adjusted optimally for this type of situation obviously if you've got the gib really tight um, then uh, the ball screw is dragging it up and down against friction and you're not likely to get very good repeatability. On the other hand, if you've got it, the gib too loose and it's sort of flopping around on there, you're not likely to get good repeatability. So you've got to get the, the gib adjusted to its optimum and it's also dependent on um, the condition of your machine and how well it was built in the first place and uh, all those type of variables whether the lubricants getting there properly and so on but no good news it's um, the test that I've just done is repeating very well um, I'll just show that to you now okay let's do a little test now and see what the t this Tormac 1100 will repeat in its uh, vertical positioning in this case it's the X so let's just enter a bit of code G0 X zero <laughs> enter okay we've got that set on zero so let's lift it up let's do that again g zero x zero enter that's really good let me zoom in on that now okay let's say we're coming up to the finishing cart and it's going to be a dimension which we're just going to use 0 for G0, X0. It's going to wrap it into position. And it's very good. It's repeating each time. Let's uh, do another one. 
G zero X zero enter. You can see that's very good. That's that's good news. There's a lot of potential here for doing accurate machining work as far as I can see. G zero X zero enter. I mean obviously this is just representing representing it. But you know it's showing that it is repeating consistently. G zero X point one enter. And there you can see it's five hundredths away, which is oh the radius. Sorry about that. Well, Mr. Green has just started up across the road and decided to give us a bit of background music. Sorry about that. One thing I've found really um, useful for production machining is to have an internal lathe stop. Let's just zoom in on that. So you've got a little uh, stop here. And that means that when you've machined the first operation of the part, and that might have been out of a length of stock, and you've parted it off and you've got a short piece, you can then turn it around the other way to machine the other end, slip it up against the stop, and each time it positions in the same place. What a racket out there. Um, I put a bigger chuck on as well here. Um, this is a five inch chuck, a 125 millimeter chuck. And you see I've ground the outside step of the jaw off. Uh, another act of sacrilege but you know if you're holding a big diamond apart this part of the jaw is uh, hanging out in the air anyway and just fouling with things it, it doesn't achieve it it doesn't give you any more accuracy it just gives you more danger um, so I, I, I did that several years ago and it's been really useful uh, for spindle turning and now I'll be able to use it on the uh, rapid turn Okay, and this is my rapid turn spindle stop. It's um, just a bit of half inch rod with uh, um, adjustable end pieces so I can fit in various inserts and with various buttons on the end to suit the size of job I'm using. Um, it's got a centralizing bush so that at high revs um, it's a reasonably close fit inside the bore of rapid turn spindle so at high revs it doesn't suddenly flail out <laughs> and um, crash around so it's held in the middle um, and then I've got this uh, um, double lock bush that I've developed a couple of years ago I've, I've, I've mentioned this in another video um, it's a single grub screw that tightens on the sliding shaft but it also reacts whoa it also reacts outwards when you tighten it up and locks in the bore as well. So the one grub screw locks it uh, in position inside the spindle of rapid turn and also locks the uh, shaft. I'll just show it in place. Okay, that's it in place there. I'll just zoom in on it a bit and see if I can get, um, try not to get between the camera and it. See if this works. Whoa, okay. So this one grub screw locks both the outer bush by reacting, that locks that, and it also locks the inner shaft. I assume someone's thought of that before, I don't know if it's original or not, so I haven't bothered to look into whether it's worth patenting. But anyway, it's too late to patent it now because it's online. So that single screw locks it for both. And that could be aluminium or steel. I just used a bit of acetal because um, I had a bit the right size and it's probably good enough for a light lathe like this. But probably aluminium would be a better choice if you had a piece of the right size. So looking at that bush up close, it's just a simple uh, ID and OD bush with a uh, a little uh, section machined out on three sides so it's connected it's still connected to the bush there but it's completely machined through with a little end mill um, on three sides so that it's free to flex like a little leg and the grub screw 
has got a soft insert in it so that it doesn't um, dent into the shaft and burr it up. It's got a little piece of aluminium let into it, but you could use copper or, as long as it's softer than the, the shaft itself. Although it's a pretty rough old shaft, I, I was out of half inch or 12 mil steel. I just found an old bit that I've been using as a, a machine roller and it's covered in burrs and dents and <laughs> oh dear, I should have gone to the steel supply shop and bought another piece, but just to get it going, I've I've used that. So in order to mount that 5 inch chuck um, I just used a adapter plate. Um, I don't want to make a, a dedicated arbor to go in the 5C spindle bore because um, we don't yet know what uh, Tormac are going to do with regards to rectifying the problems with the existing rapid turn spindle bores. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks now, it's now the 13th of December and I have not heard back from Tormac as to what they plan to do. Whether they're going to send out replacement spindles or complete headstocks or whether they've got some other solution that I can't think what other solution there would be. But it's kind of holding me back a bit because I don't want to make uh, a special arbor or buy a special arbor to suit a spindle bore that's currently incorrect. So I've just made this temporary uh, adapter plate um, which may or may not be useful long term depending on um, how the uh, rapid turn spindle is rectified. Okay let's just go through very quickly setting the offsets. So um, I like the, the master tool method being tool 1 and, and setting the work offsets on the main DROs with tool one. Um, Daniel Rogie does a good video on that. I think it's called cutting your first part on a tour mark lathe. So I'm just using a piece of um, aluminium machined accurately in half set vertically with a square. Can you see that okay? Um, then come down uh, in front of it, put on a piece of paper, like so, move back on the Y, till it's just tight, enter the thickness of the paper in the Y DRO, point 0.1, and then uh, Lift the tool up, turn it round until it's horizontal, and we're just going to use this to approximately set it in the X uh, main DRO and enter zero. So in that way we've got the Y and the X set pretty quickly. Okay, so we've done a series of conversational uh, bits of code and um, appended them together. Fantastic software, I love it. Um, it's all pretty new to me though. Um, put the part in to the stop that I've just explained. Do it up really tight, there's quite a bit of leverage out there, we don't want it coming loose. And we've got to do pretty aggressive feed per revolution with a seatle, otherwise you don't get chip breaking. I've ground chip breaking on the tool, um, but it needs a, a hefty feed per revolution to shatter the swath as it comes off because I want to be able to plug in a part and go away and do something else. I've got scores of these to make and I don't want to be hovering over it. I don't want to get involved with removing strings of swarth and that's dangerous stuff. So it's going to be uh, chip breaking itself. Uh, might not have it quite set right yet, but uh, that's the uh, end goal anyway. So here we are, we're getting underway on a first paid job for me for rapid turn. Woohoo!
are, the first automatic run paid part you can settle overnight now before the finish machining. So I'll just get underway now and do the run of these parts. Okay, let's just go quickly through the program. As I mentioned before, this is not my strength, so I'll just go through it really quickly. So if we look at the file, um, right at the start, I've, um, where are we? We're about towards the end. Let's go right to the start. I think, uh, where is it? Yeah, here. At the point where you've got G30, park tool, I'm just putting in a safety G, G0, Y0 there to make sure that it's back to Y0. And then uh, further down, when it comes to the tool change, where is it? Um, still on T1. So you look through it until you get to T2, because you've done all the uh, programming. Um, and as far as path pilot's concerned, you're still in the same Y position. So you keep looking through for T2 which is here, T202, that's the tool and the offsets. Okay, so now underneath T2, um, which is here, you've got uh, Park Tool, G30, T2, um, some basic RPM settings and so on, and then you've got the beginning um, of that tool's offsets, G0, X and Y. So first of all, I put in G0, Y and whatever that offset is, which in this case is almost exactly 119 millimeters. Uh, and then it will stay in that Y position until it's commanded to do otherwise. Um, right at the end, as a backup, I've got in here, after parking the tool to G0, Y0, just in case um, I were to do something unusual with the program and start it halfway through. So I've got a, a two, ti two times return to Y0. So um, that's the basis of it um, from a layman's point of view. Okay, let's run part number two now. I'll just run it from, film it from different angles. <laughs> Underway. That wraps it up, episode 10. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>